So this is, this is my first tiki mug, and the first time I had a Mai Tai, which is at the now twice defunct Trader Vic's at the Palmer House in Chicago. Um, it was a great night. It was New Year's, and they closed it immediately after that. That was pretty sad, but it was, it, it was great, and the Mai Tai kind of changed my life. Um, going back to the history of the whole, whole thing, uh, up on the top there, you've got Don Beach, Don the Beachcomber. Um, he had this idea of starting something tropical, started the Don the Beachcomber restaurants, and then Vic Bergeron started Trader Vic's, and it kind of took off in the 1920s and 30s, and uh, mostly Hollywood, California, in that area. Uh, the rest of the country was kind of this front porch culture. Everybody's kind of sat in their front porches, they entertained their friends there. They didn't really do anything in the backyards, that was farmland. Uh, as the uh, 50s or 40s and 50s and everybody's moving to suburbia, everybody's like, hey, we've got backyards. Let's do something else there. Let's have parties. Let's have a luau. Uh, and then the 50s, uh, 40s, 50s, we had the World War II came around. Everybody started going, hey, we're in the South Pacific. There's some nice weather. There's uh, tropical things going on. Let's have more parties. And then Thor hired all just took this raft across the Pacific, and everybody's like, hey, he's got this Contiki boat. He's traveling. Let's name everything Contiki. Let's uh, make everything into you know, some sort of tropical paradise, because that's what everybody wants. Everything became tropical. So you have your apartments, your mobile homes, your trailers, your golf courses, your oh, everything, your uh, everything in your backyard. Uh, and and everybody in Mid America was like, let's let's just imbibe, let's have our own little parties. Um, and so you had your backyard luau's, your poo poo platters, and on Broadway we had South Pacific and then bring into the movies. So it, the 1950s were kind of the heyday of mass tiki culture in America. You could still find it in your parents' basements and stuff like that. As we went on into the 60s, oh, and of course, you know, there's your backyard stuff. Uh, as we went on into the 60s, it started getting a little kitschy. Uh, the Chinese restaurants were starting to serve really su super sweet Mai Tais that were really disgusting. And then, uh, then there was uh, the Vietnam War, and that jungle wasn't as fun. So, uh, so people started cutting back. Uh, the bottom part, uh, picture there you can see is Lou from Mad Men. He had a tiki bar in his office, and it kind of like set the scene for like, here's your fuddy-duddy old dad with his tiki bar. Not good. As time went on, people started rediscovering tikis, mostly in their uh, thrift shops, uh, in their parents' record collections. Uh, at the top row there, we've got a lot of Martin Denny, all the classical tiki stuff, and then uh, a lot of artists started going, hey, we like these bird calls with our music. You know, a little drum beat, a little uh, frog croaking in the background. Uh, so they just kind of went on. We had artists uh, Shag and Piz, and uh, all, all sorts of people starting to rediscover, you know, like this hip culture and cocktails and swinging times. And it was, those were kind of good times. Let's bring it back. Let's, let's add, uh, add some more excitement to our lives. Uh, so they did, and it started growing. And it became, went from a small little subculture in California to slowly spreading out across the culture, especially with the new cocktail revolution that was happening in the, in the 90s and the 2000s. Um, websites started popping up to celebrate tiki culture uh, and helping people get together, especially as the web started growing. Uh, it was more than just Facebook. We had uh, it's Tiki Central, which is uh, the bulletin board that all the tiki nuts go to. Um, and, uh, and one of them, Beach Bumberry, wrote a series of books chronicling the tiki culture in drinks, uh, doing a lot of research in the original uh, recipe books. Uh, mug manufacturers, Tiki Farm, Monk Tiki, all these places are coming up with some great, these are mugs from my personal collection. Um, I've, I've got a couple hundred more, um, which my wife keeps telling me to do something with, but uh, they're, uh, they're very entertaining. My kids love to drink out of them. Uh, they don't get as much rum as I do. Uh, a lot of books are being written. I mean, these, these are great coffee table books, big, thick tomes full of research. Uh, going for you know hundreds of dollars after they've run out of print, uh, 
and they're they're great. They're great histories of America, American culture. America has the tiki culture that other countries don't have, but tiki bars are spreading around the world. Um, so these are a bunch of local, or not local, local to the United States tiki bars. Unfortunately, Grand Rapids does not have a local tiki bar. Uh, we almost did. Uh, we once did. Uh, oh, different magazines and news. But let me talk about local tiki bars. So we once did. Just discovered back uh, in November, I saw someone in Tiki Central posted that there was the uh, Scotty's uh, Tropics, I think it was. Uh, there was a slide coming up. Uh, where uh, Hall and South Division, the building is still there, built in the early 1900s, uh, and it was a tiki bar, or a Polynesian-themed restaurant. Went out of business in the 60s, and uh, we were going to have a new one, but uh, the beer culture took over, and Hopcat decided they'd rather open more Hopcats around the country instead of opening a tiki bar for me. Uh, so, so one day, I'm, I'm still hoping. So yeah, there's Scotty's, there's the other place. Shrunk ahead, it could have been. I'm still hoping. Uh, hopefully they'll, they'll move away from barbecue because there's other barbecue places. I'm hoping to go for Cuban cuisine. That would be lovely. Um, and, uh, and we really could use a good uh, Mai Tai in this town because the only place I know to get a good Mai Tai is at my house. But you're not invited all at once. But that's the recipe if you care to use the traditional Trader Vic Mai Tai recipe. It's delicious. I hope you enjoy it, if you try it. And uh, I think we're running out of the, uh, definitely running out of the slides. Thank you very much.